this is Jane Lo. I'm here on site at the uh, Singapore University of Social Sciences here in uh, Clementi. And uh, with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Jasper Kanataka, Kanataka. Uh, who is the security researcher with Boysin. And he's actually um, flown in from Japan to give a course at SUSS over the last two days on security yes. in Web3. So um, Jasper is very kind to spare some time before he flies off to Japan tomorrow. So thank you so much, Jasper, for your time today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, so um, Jasper, um, over the last two days, you, you gave a very in-depth uh, sort of analysis into the, some of the smart contract code vulnerabilities. And I thought today we can talk about phishing and wallets, which I think is uh, very interesting in the Web3 space because obviously phishing is something that's very old since 20, 30 years, I believe. Yeah. But there's a lot of uh, interesting characteristics in uh, Web3. Yeah. And also we'll talk about wallet, which is obviously a very uh, new sort of vulnerability in the Web3 space, which a lot of people would not have encountered before in Web2. Yeah. So we'll talk about these two topics. So to start off with phishing, right? Um, right, so tell us um, what is so new about some of the phishing um, life, uh, real life cases that you've seen in Web3. So you talk about airdrops and also like new channels that people are using, yeah. using Discord yeah. and Telegram, of course, right? Yeah. In Web3, phishing is very in innovative compared to the traditional phishing and it can lead to a huge amount of loss in terms of uh, the amount of assets. So uh, in Web3, there are many ways that a fish can scam people. For example, he can get your signature by pretending to be the uh, official party or the legitimate website. And um, he can also um, have this uh, like fake airdrop website. Yes. yes. Uh, so for some of our audience who are new to Web3, can you explain yeah. why it's the airdrop? Uh, because for crypto projects to attract new users, they will airdrop tokens to uh, new users and have them like involved and be on board. So this is like giving away free tokens online, some, yes. something like that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so sometimes scammers pretend to be the legitimate party and mm -hmm. uh, have airdrops, but in reality, they're just um, trying to get your signature and uh, steal your assets. So and, they imp yeah. impersonate some of the famous people that we yes. know about, right? Yeah. Uh, for example, in Twitter, uh, there's like a uh, fake Elon Musk and fake uh, Vitalik that's mm. promising free giveaway of tokens or free airdrop of um, different assets, but they are actually not real. Mm -hmm. And uh, those impersonators will just take your money and not return it. Yes, and also um, Discord channel, Telegram channel, that's also uh, very uh, attractive uh, places for Web3 users and also yeah. attractive for attackers as well, right? Yeah, yeah. so in terms of Discord, um, Discord is a very popular software by many pro crypto projects to have their community engagement. And uh, attackers utilize this fact and create some fake Discord bot mm. that will uh, authenticate user but asking for their private information, for example, their wallet password or right. their uh, mnemonic words, mm. so the attackers can get a hold of assets. So this is a little bit like the old school phishing where they ask for banking credentials yes. in the old school phishing, isn't it? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so talking about wallets then, so wallets, um, you also talk about how um, some users can be fooled into uh, downloading fake wallets. Yeah right? Um, as well as uh, authenticating tran fake transactions as yeah. well uh, on their wallets. Can you tell us about some of the real life case studies that you've seen? Yeah, or so, hacking incidents rather? Uh, so recently, a wallet called BitKeep was compromised. And on their official website, the uh, APK was mm. being um, um, in, in, uh, was, ha had a malicious code implanted in the package. And everyone who installed the package from the official website in their Android phones were compromised and their private keys were stolen and their crypto assets were transferred. And, and this is one of the uh, incident in wallet security. And last year, one of the uh, Solana's wallet called mm -hmm. Slope was also compromised. And the reason was because the wallet transfers the mnemonic key or the seed phrase in plain text to the Sentry server. And, uh, attackers control the central server mm -hmm. and, 
and he, he received uh, multiple users' nomadic words mm -hmm. and start transferring assets in mass. And at the time, many users suspect that Solana itself was compromised, but in reality, it was just uh, one of the wallet slope mm -hmm. was compromised. And that that's the importance of wallet security because it affects lots of people, that's lots right. of users. And we need to um, be careful when we choose our wallet and mm -hmm. um, always check the official source and double check the package signature before we install them. Right. Um, and it's uh, very different in the old school Web2 world whereby we custodize our um, monies with the bank and we sort of outsource that responsibility of looking after the money yeah. with, to the bank. But in the Web3 world, we sort of um, are responsible for those assets ourselves, yeah. right? Yeah, so that's uh, where the users uh, will have to pay more attention to how they actually um, uh, look after this uh, locker of yeah. their, their monies, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, thanks for sharing those uh, real-life case studies. Um, and before uh, you go, um, I think a lot of people will be also very interested in, you know, because you are from Japan, they will be interested to know about the Japanese sort of regulations around cryptocurrency use, yeah. uh, mining, right? Yeah. Um, so can you tell us the, some of the highlights, the recent regulations around um, cryptocurrencies or, or blockchain in general in Japan? Yeah, so in Japan, uh, most exchanges have to uh, get their coin approved in order to, for it to be traded. Unlike uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in other countries. For example, uh, I believe in Singapore, your exchange can list uh, coins that they want to list. Oh, right. okay. But in Japan, like they need to get the coin pre-approved oh, by the uh, finance agency before they can actually um, list them on the exchange. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, regulations, Japan is actually uh, rather advanced because um, instead of uh, rejecting in whole, they embrace it and have some regulations to help startups and clear the definitions of uh, crypto assets. Right, okay. So, um, yeah, so it's very interesting you say that uh, there's uh, some pre-approvals with regards to coins. Yeah. Um, so is that applied to security tokens or all sorts of tokens, even utility tokens? It applies to all sorts of tokens. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Right, um, so it seems like in, in Japan, they are actually taking a very, very um, in-depth look into all crypto-related activities, whether yeah. it's uh, for uh, utility of the blockchain ecosystem itself or whether it's actually used as a payment um, token. Yes. Wow, that's very interesting. Okay, and then um, final question. I think um, many people will be also very interested in given you know what has happened in the crypto valuations in you know the recent months, yeah. and many people think ah attackers are very interested in stealing coins yeah. or cryptocurrency when it's of very high value. But given what has happened in the last two months and the or rather the crypto winter that we're seeing, do you think that attackers are still interested in stealing, you know? Yes, uh, uh, money I think they or are. Crypto? They are still interested and they will still be interested because uh, crypto assets has still have a, a value mm. and um, it's, it's free basically for attackers to gain money. So they don't need uh, capital investment, but they can get um, free coins uh, just by stealing from other people. Mm -hmm. So um, whether it's bear market or bull market, attackers will always keep on working. Right, okay. Uh, I guess the, the with regulations becoming uh, stronger and stronger, it's a uh, going to be a more difficult challenge for them to off-ramp those uh, currencies in the future. Uh, yes, I believe so as well. But the technology is still advancing very fast and attackers can use different means to do money laundry and obfuscate their trades. For example, they can use mixers or they can use different cross-chain bridges to move their assets around and make it more difficult for investors mm -hmm. and regulators to follow up. Right, okay. That, that, that will be an interesting space to see how it evolves in the next uh, coming two years. Like, yes. like you say, technology is uh, developing so quickly. So thank you so much, Jasper, for your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.